Hello, Samantha. So nice to meet you and get to talk to you today. I'm super excited. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. I am so excited as well. I'm, I've been all excited all week. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to do this. So Aww. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. Yeah, we're super excited. So the first thing I like to do is go over, I think everybody wants to hear stats. Like we all, because, you know, as, as we're new post-op patients or even pre-op patients, we want to talk to people that are exactly where we're at. They're four months post-op. They're five months post-op. And so we can see and get a look into what are they eating and what are they drinking and how are they having this complication or whatever. So go ahead and give me your stats and all that good stuff. Okay. So I'm actually the 24th of this month, I'll be nine months post-op. And right now I have noticed. So of course, at the beginning, right after surgery, what I did is I went on Instagram and I was looking at, I was trying to find people that were kind of in the same time frame as me or trying to figure out when they were in the same time frame as me, what they were eating, how they were eating, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, you see a lot of the people that you'll see, they're like two years post-op and you're like, dang, that food looks good. I can't wait till I can eat like that because I'm over here with my cottage cheese looking sad or I have a protein shake. So yeah, right now I've noticed that I can eat a pretty good amount. Some days are way different than others. I've noticed that some days I'm not hungry at all and I have to force myself to eat something because you have to eat. And then other days, it, I feel like ravenous, like I, I can't stop eating. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. But yeah, so because I'm five months post-op on November the 10th. And um, sometimes I, I feel like not eating. And sometimes I'm mm -hmm. like, it's okay if I don't eat, right? And so I have to like, no, you just get in a shake, get in your protein. But I kind of feel the same way. I just am grossed out by food. I do not want to eat, especially anything solid. I'm not in the mood for anything solid, which is weird to have that, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yeah, it is. And I, I know what you're talking about because for probably the three or four month post-op mark, I didn't want to eat. I would forget kind of to eat. I'd go halfway through the day and I'd be like, wow. I haven't eaten anything all day today. Like nothing sounds good. Nothing sounds appetizing. I don't want to eat. So that's kind of interesting that you say that because I I hadn't heard anybody talking about that either. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of people that kind of incorporate fasting or, oh gosh, what do you call it? Intermittent fasting, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, like an 18-6 or a 24, whatever, you know, your hours, you fast 18 hours, you eat for six hours. A lot of people have done that. I haven't really incorporated that. I don't know if that's even okay. I haven't asked my dietitian, but I definitely need some, some gross hormone or I mean to help with yeah. just giving your body a break from food. Yeah. I don't know, but I haven't tried that. I've heard about it. I haven't even touched that yet or even thought of, you know, did it. Yeah. It might be something we might look into. Yeah. I haven't, I've heard about the intermittent fasting, but I, I don't know if I could do it. I think I'd get a little hangry, not eating for quite mm -hmm. amounts. Cause I've heard about it and I've heard people doing like, they do really well on it, but I think it's just everybody's a little bit different. So I think I would get a little grouchy <laughs> going only yeah. six hours. Yeah. So you had your surgery on February 28th, 21, you said this year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you had it in Mexico. What was that like? Can you go over I, the whole Mexico yeah. thing? That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Yes. So in February, I didn't have insurance or anything like that. I didn't have the job that I have now. Um, and I had talked to my husband like a year and a half ago about the surgery because I have PCOS. And so I did some research and that's polycystic ovarian syndrome and it's insulin resistant. And so basically it didn't matter what I ate, 
I tried so many different diets, like low carb, keto, all the stuff, and nothing was helping my weight. And I'm really short. I'm 4'11", and I was almost 200 Shut strong. your mouth. <laughs> yeah, Are you so seriously 4'11"? Oh my yeah, God, I am 4'11". Oh my gosh. I am, it's so hard to meet people who are short too because I just, I feel like everybody's taller than us. And it's like, everybody says like, well, when did you have your bear to surgery? And I was like, well, my highest weight was 211. Which for my height is, that's a lot for 4'11". Yeah. And so my surgery weight was 179 and then my current weight is 147. So, but heck, 4'11", oh my God, I just, I'm yes. so excited. So <laughs> you're my height. Okay. So what was your starting weight again? It was the day that, so, cause I booked my surgery literally a week before I had it. So I didn't have a big pre-op diet or anything like that, but it was 188 the morning that I went in. What is what was your highest weight ever that you'd ever been? So probably about because I had lost a good amount of weight. My husband and I moved here to Texas from Colorado and I was stressed out because he wasn't here and I was here. So I wasn't, you know, I, was, I lost a good amount of weight. But I think I stopped weighing myself once I hit like 195. I stopped weighing myself completely. Yeah. So I know that I did get higher than that, but I personally didn't want to see that number so I just yeah. kind of yeah stopped playing myself yeah because I mean you already have yourself talking to yourself saying oh my god you're so big you're so uncomfortable oh my gosh you go every day with guilt and shame and self-hate mm -hmm. and just like oh so I mean you definitely don't need a scale to rub it in even more so yeah, I, threw, I threw our scale away and like my husband he had asked me he's like where did it go and I was like I threw it in the trash <laughs> like I don't want it to be in the same house as me like I just can't it's just stressful because I got you're you trying to do good in your life and it's just that like one thing that's like weighing over you so for my knowledge for a number that I can put on was 195 is the highest that but I know that I was higher than that yeah but that's the only that I know and you, you are eight months post op, mm -hmm. right? And how much mm -hmm. do you weigh right now? Like I weighed myself this morning, um, one fifteen. You, bitch! I really <laughs> hate your guts. Like, <laughs> wow! I would, I kind of want to be one fifteen. Like, I don't know. That seems so far away. Like, it just seems mm -hmm. like unattainable. One, I've never, my lowest weight, because I was one of those people that fluctuated the two times in my life that I actually lost weight. I'll tell you, one time was when I went to Gold's Gym and I was doing the body pump class and the combat mm -hmm. class and really got into it just consistently. And I don't even know what I weighed. I don't even remember, but I just know that my body felt great. I felt like yeah. muscle definition. I felt amazing in my life. And then the, this last recent time I got my lowest weight I've ever been ever was 138. And at that time I was basically just not eating, starving. I mean, I think I lost mm -hmm. all my muscle. I didn't like, it, it just wasn't a good situation. I was just sick. Yeah. 115 just sounds like, God, man, I can't imagine being 115. Like, yeah. what is that like? I mean, it's, okay, so yeah. what does that feel like? And what size pants uh, do you wear? Oh, my God, you're a two. Oh, I'm a two? Oh, <laughs> my God, I hate you. <laughs> I mean, I love you, and I, but I hate you. <laughs> wow. I got, no, because I'll look right now, because I have the peri, the very, very astic, very tastic app, because you're five, you're five months, right? So... I'll actually tell you what I was. Let's see. Oh, wow. You're one of those good. You like really log everything. Yes. So oh, I was only. So when I was about five months, I was 149. Huh? Get. Oh, my God. I just want to cry right now. I just want to cry right now. So you know what? Because I'm 147. No, really, that is real. I'm, I am crying right now because that's super encouraging because I think. 
as we go through this and it's just everybody, whoever's listening knows that when you're in your struggle at in your month or whatever month it is, you feel like you're, I'm trying to put it into words, just it's so unattainable. Yes. Every day is a struggle. Every day it's a fight to get in your water, to get in your protein, just to the body positivity, just to feel like, man, I can do this. Come on, keep and pushing and pushing. And you just, you don't, you don't see it. The, hey, where is CC going to be in, in a year from now? And how's food going to be for CC then? Because right now it sucks. Can't eat yes. meat. I can't. I'm, I've been working on this piece of chicken for, I need to eat it. I need to eat that yeah. chicken and I can't eat it. So yeah. it's like such a struggle. So, man, that's so encouraging. Mm -hmm. Wow. You just made my day, girl. You made my day. So I didn't go. When you told me that, I was like, I was sitting here thinking and I was like, I'm pretty sure I was around that week because that was in about June. And I was like, I think I was like, I'm gonna have to look at my thing because I don't try to, I don't weigh myself like at the beginning. I was weighing myself once a week, every week, mm -hmm. Thursdays were my weight days. So every morning I'd get up, I'd weigh myself, put it in my app, see kind of where I was in the goal and everything like that. And then just forget about it until the next week. Mm -hmm. And Probably last month, I hit 120. And then once I hit 115, because I was like, I feel like that's a good weight for my height and just like my body frame and everything. Mm -hmm. I was like, now I'm going to see without weighing myself every week if this is something that I can maintain. Because I don't you know, I'm going to be only nine months post-op. I don't want to get smaller than 115 because I feel at that point, that's yeah. too small. Yeah, you have no butt. No. Yeah. If you're I like 100 butt. pounds. You'll have no butt. Um, no <laughs> yes. You'll be like yeah. a little fifth grader guy, a little boy. I mean, it's what you're, yeah. Because yeah. we're yes. so short. We're already like, mm -hmm. I have a stepson who prides himself because he's almost as tall as me and he's in fourth grade. And it's like, oh my God. You know, you, yes. you don't look like him. So you don't want that either. So it's kind of mm -hmm. hard. Everybody's different. Everybody's body's different and it's just encouraging to hear your number at when you were at five months because mm -hmm. just right now it seems so unattainable but who knows where I'll be I may be there I may not be there I don't know so but it's still encouraging to hear that though I think yeah well I know I was like oh I'm gonna have to tell you because you're yeah I was like we're the same height and yeah you know when you're shopping for clothes and everything like I haven't shopped for clothes really a lot lately just because I'll buy something and then a month later it doesn't fit. And it kind of makes you mad. It makes you happy, but at the same time, you're like, dang, I just wasted all that money. So, but I had these shorts that were size fours and my husband and I went out and it was like to the point where I'd sit and you could see in my pants. And I was like, ah, oh, I need new pants. Like, this is the weirdest thing. So oh. I'm telling you, when she gets to the point where I am, you're going to get when she gets the fours and twos, it's kind of exciting. Well, I know? just bought some loft size four, but they're stretchies. They're the stretch ones. So they're probably not, they're not like regular fours. They're just mm -hmm. they're the stretchy ones. But I bought them tight. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to like not have to, they're like $80 pair. So it's like, eh, yeah, I don't want to, I just want to make sure I can have some time in them. So, so here, how did you lose your weight? Was it a gradual loss or did you have, like a little stall and then you have a big loss like how did yours come off so so mine basically because I got my surgery in February and then I didn't go back to work until May so from February to May it was like just gradually like every week I'd be losing like five to seven pounds I think my abs said and I wasn't doing anything at all and then the weirdest thing when I started working and I have a, a physical labor job. So I'm moving probably all day for my whole entire shift. And I noticed that I actually started stalling more when I started working again and working out, which was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but I had a couple stalls. I probably had about three. So when I hit about one... I went to hit about like 160 at a stall and then I was actually gaining weight too, which was kind of interesting. And then when I hit about 140, 
is when I had another stall and then at about 120. So it's, about, so it's weird yeah. how that works because I had a stall. I was losing consistently. And then when I got to around one, I fluctuated between like 150 to 153. And it's like, I'd get on the scale 151.2, 152.4, 150.8. 153.1 it's like son of a bitch like I could right. not it was so frustrated and that lasted weeks and yeah. I, and I was so frustrated but but I did start exercising um <laughs> and then one day I got on the scale and it was 147 oh but right now I fluctuate between 145 to 148 so today I was 147 so for me I'm kind of like in a three pound range and then I stay in there and then all of a sudden it just, my body's like, okay, go a little bit more. And then it lets right. more go. But it's weird how that works. It's so weird. Yeah. That is, and it's kind of cool because I actually had a surgery buddy. So when I went to Mexico, I had a girl, she got the same exact surgery as me, same day we shared a room um, and we check in on each other every couple of months. We'll text each other, see how we're doing. And even though we got we had the same surgeon too, and we had it the same day and everything, her surgery was completely different for me. Like I had asked her, like, have you had any stalls or anything like that? And she was like, No, literally, like it's just been completely downhill with my weight the whole entire time. I haven't had any stalls. And she's had like no food aversions or anything like that. I think it was like a month and a half after she was like eating solids and like not having any problems where like Wow. When I was at that point, I was like, oh, like it hurt <laughs> to eat anything that wasn't yeah. kind of soft. So it's kind of interesting how, because you got VSG as well, right? Yes. So it's interesting to see that, like, even though we've had like the same surgery is that like some things are so similar, but then other people have completely different experiences. So it's kind of interesting and kind of cool to see the differences. So after surgery, did you have any food aversions like you couldn't eat certain things after surgery like you had to change your total way of eating compared to before <laughs> yes so one thing that's like kind of funky is that marinara sauce like marinara sauce I will automatically like it just hurts and I end up throwing up every single time but I can eat tomatoes like I can make a capri salad and I'm fine so it's super weird and then also to my husband, he really likes Chick-fil-A and I'll get like the grilled nuggets. I would get the grilled nuggets. And it's something about how they make their food. Anytime I even try to eat Chick-fil-A, I throw up. So it's kind of kind of good because it's not, you're not supposed to eat it anyways. But yeah. yeah, I can't eat. I have a hard time with Chick-fil-A too. It seems like once you start biting it, okay, here's my impression of it. Okay, and the little nuggets, when I do eat those, it mm -hmm. feels like, it's kind of like they shredded up the chicken and then they made it into a little nugget. Like it's not like a whole piece of meat. Like it's because it's like shredded. I don't know. It gives me, it get, it makes me grossed out. Like I just can't eat it yeah. either. Like they I don't shut know. it, wrapped it back again. Yeah, yeah. It's just like falls apart. It's just so gross. Yeah. I just can't eat it. Like I have a hard time mm -hmm. too with Chick-fil-A. Yeah. So when you went to Mexico, was that kind of scary? And how much did they charge you? Was it expensive? So, no, it wasn't. So I paid cash. So it was 4500 for, because it depends on the doctor that you get. And I had Alejandro. So I had Dr. Alejandro Gutierrez. And so it depends on which doctor you get because they do the sleeve, they do the mini pads, bypass. And then there's another one too. But so it depends on who, what surgeon you get. And when I went to go through with the surgery, because I had that conversation with my husband like a year and a half ago, and then we moved here and I was like, you know, I think I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. And he was like, whatever you want to do, that's okay, fine. Do it. Yeah. I yeah, mean, he's like, screw it. Just yeah. do it. Because, you know, you're just wasting, I, you I, know, I, I wish I would have done it when my kids were little. Like, I can't tell you how many times that we would have went somewhere and then I would actually get to be with them. So it's so worth it to 
take the plunge. And it, yeah. that's awesome that you did it. It's such a young age. I mean, you're what, 24? I'm 28. 28. Well, you're still a baby. Yeah. You're still a baby. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Okay. Yeah, cause I so, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you went to San Diego, right? You flew down to San yeah. Diego? So I actually flew into LAX because my um, my family, like my grandparents, live in California. So my sister picked me up from LAX, and we went to the San Diego airport. So most what usually happens is people will fly into San Diego. I just did like a little detour, but they pick you up, and they take you across the border. They have like the passenger vans, and they take you across the border, and they take you to the hospital that I was at was Me Doctor. And so it's like right across the border. I think it took us like 20 minutes to get there. Um, they bring you in, you sign a bunch of paperwork, they do all the vitals, they check everything to make sure um, that you followed like your pre op diet. Cause everybody else was different. Like some of the girls that were there, they had like a three week pre op diet. I only had a week. So everybody, we just got all of our paperwork done. And then this is in the middle of COVID. So the night before. That's awesome um, they, that you got to do it, though. Everybody yes. else had to wait, you know, wait mm-hmm. until there was an, they opened it back up again here. Oh, that's awesome. So, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So they, so they dropped us off. And it was really nice. I think it was the Hilton. And that's included in, like, the package or whatever. And you could take a person. But my husband wouldn't have been able to go into the hospital with me or anything like that. And I was like, what is the point of you going if you're not going to be able to be there with me? Because you're just going to be more stressed out than you are at home yeah. and I was like my parents are literally like three hours away if I need them they can just come to me so um but you could take a person one girl did bring her husband and he sat outside the hospital all day so uh, but before COVID you would have someone they would stay in the room with you and everything like that you could take someone but so the first night I was there I stayed at the Hilton that was included and then they picked us up in the morning in the hospital, it wasn't, it was like, things were outdated, but it wasn't like dirty. It wasn't gross. The whole time I was there, I didn't feel unsafe or anything like that. It was amazing care. The nurses were awesome. There's this coordinator, Carla. She was great because a lot of people, this was their first surgery. So they had never gone under anesthesia. Yeah. So she was there like trying to make sure like she was going to room to room checking on everybody making sure like wanted to make sure everybody felt good and the nurses too like anything you needed and everybody was bilingual as well so they would they would start off talking to you some of the nurses would start off talking to you in spanish and then if you were like oh, no <laughs> like i don't know enough to have a conversation with you they'd switch to english automatically and oh. stuff like that so everything was it was clean i had really good care just like some things were outdated, like, you know, the little stand, like the IV bags and stuff. They have a wonky wheel and stuff like that. But that's about it. So yeah. I've never heard anything bad about going to Mexico for the surgery. I think it's helped a lot of people who otherwise would not be able to get it because they can't get approved for whatever reason. So you had your surgery and yeah. how was it waking up? Like, how did you do when you woke up at a surgery and like? So <laughs> I'm like, look, I don't know what it is about anesthesia, but because I've had a couple surgeries and I just get angry when I wake up. Like, I'm just mad at everyone and everything. And it's just, I just, I woke up and the gas bubbles, my shoulder, I was so mad. I was like, this is like, it was bad. Like the gas pain for me, I was just miserable. And then, um, so they actually gave me extra pain medicine because they had already given me some and I was like no my body feels like it's just like my shoulder feels like it's gonna pop off so they gave me extra and after that and after I walked around a little bit and everything I felt really good I didn't really oh sorry someone's they're mowing so I might have to I might have to mow they're mowing the one next door so let me know okay no it's okay Okay. okay so but yeah, I had that pain and pretty much that was about it. Like my incisions were good. It was just that gas pain that really got me. The gas pain. How I, didn't, pain? I didn't have any, really? like nothing. I woke up and I thought they lied to me. I was like, I got ripped off. They didn't do nothing. 
they didn't, I didn't feel any pain. I didn't have, I mean, I felt bloated, Mm -hmm. but I didn't feel anything. So I can't imagine that you just, yeah. Did you have to drink water right away or, or they gave you protein shakes or how did they kind of feed you afterwards? So, um, I had my surgery at nine in the morning. So they put me back in my room, let me sleep. And then I had to do a leak test before they let us ingest anything. <clears throat> so did you have to do a leak test at all? No. Nope. No. So what it is, it's like this liquid. It was blue. It was absolutely disgusting. But they put this machine in front of you. And so you they have you drink it and it goes down and it shows... Basically, it shows up on the screen. I don't know what what chemical it is or whatever, but this shows up and then they're double checking and making sure that none of your stomach, new stomach is leaking like your pouch. So they had us do that. And then after that, they gave us ice chips. They gave us Gatorades. And I was only there for a day and a half after my surgery. And then I they took me back over to the United States to go do my thing. So I just had that. And then I could do protein shakes like three days after surgery. So I was on clear liquids for three days after, which was Gatorade and water, basically. How was your transition to solid food after you got out of the fluids after surgery and then soft food? How did you transition into like solids? Solids was hard, honestly. It was. Yeah. I'm asking because I am. I have a hard time. Yeah. yeah, it's it was really hard. I think probably like the last two months is when food has become enjoyable again probably like the last two months because I did have for the first three months I had like the biggest buyer's remorse of the surgery you know because it's like he you want to go and do stuff my husband's birthday was like a month after my surgery couldn't go out to eat with him I made him dinner at home and he's enjoying like all these tacos and I'm just like well <laughs> like I'll just smell it I guess like I can't have any of it but I did have really big buyer's remorse and it was just super difficult. Um, and then probably about two months ago is when it actually, food became enjoyable again. And being able to, it was easier to digest and everything like that. So when I went into solid, it was hard and I kind of backtracked and went back to like my soft foods for a while because apparently my wasn't wasn't having it. And I felt like going back a little bit and going back to the softer foods really helped me be able to go back into the solid foods again the second time that I tried. So, yeah, yeah, I I ate meat the other day and and if I eat something that is of course something solid, whatever it is, and say it it's just it feels very heavy in your gut. Like you can it's so heavy and it feels like it's not digesting. And for day, you just don't feel good. So whenever that happens, I just sort of, you know, my next meal is a shake, just my protein shake, or I'll make a, a coffee shake or my favorite is to get the Fair Life vanilla and I'll get some frozen, a half a banana and frozen strawberries, like four strawberries and I put it in the shaker and then I put in some collagen and I still put like two stevia and holy shit it's like a dessert it's like a strawberry banana shake at Sonic's like it's so good and that to me is like a treat like it just tastes so good so I love that if I could live on our protein shakes, I probably would. It's so easy because it tastes so good. It's simple. It's easy. My pouch is happy and she's not bitching at me. So (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Those fair life shakes are good. They were like the only thing that I could stomach for a while. Mm -hmm. And like, I think the consistency of them is really good. Like the premier protein shakes, I can't, like I couldn't even before surgery, they were just like, I don't know what it was about them, just something, it didn't agree with my stomach and they just don't agree with my pouch. And they don't taste as good, I feel like. And the texture's not the best, but those Fairlight shakes, they're some of my favorites. Yeah, you got to try those. You have to try those. So you had PCOS. So how how was your PCOS before? Like, what were your symptoms? 
And then how is your PCOS now? So um, I actually wasn't diagnosed until a lot later. So I was diagnosed when, how old was I? I think I was 20, I think I was 24. Yeah. So I knew all through high school. So I was like, as a kid, I was kind of chubby, you know, and then I hit my growth spurt when I was about like 14 and I slimmed down a lot. And then probably around my junior and senior year of high school, I started to gain weight but I was super active and everything. So it just wasn't, wasn't making sense. Like nothing in my life had changed and my eating habits weren't changing, but I was just gaining and gaining weight. And then when I got to college, I was like, maybe it's just like stress, like freshman 15. And then it just slowly started going up from there. And I went to multiple doctors and I was like, something's not right. Cause you know, your book, something's not right. And I just got pushed to the side. I was like, oh, you just need to eat less. You need to work out more take the stairs and sell the elevator and stuff like that. And it's like, I'm still really active. I'm still doing all this stuff. Like nothing, I'm like, I'm telling you nothing in my life has changed. And it took until 2018 when a doctor actually took me serious. But her, she, so with PCOS, a lot of doctors just like to like slap a bandaid of metformin and birth control because yeah, just, you're not having your periods and anything like that. So I have insulin resistant PCOS. So I gained a lot of weight. My periods, I would maybe have two periods a year. And which like in the scheme of things, like that sounds great. You know what I mean? You don't have to deal with it except for twice a year. But that also means that it was ovulating. It heightens your chance of cervical cancer. And then also too, I have the PCOS where like you grow hair where you're like, Females aren't supposed to grow hair. So like, I'll get like hair on my chin. I got, I get a real cool mustache sometimes and my back is super hairy and stuff like that. So when that doctor had told me like, yes, you definitely have PCOS and all these other doctors weren't taking you serious. Well, so that's good. You found a doctor that actually like, yeah, helped you. So she gave me birth control and metformin and spiritalone, I think it is. And so metformin, it basically, it just makes you not hungry. And I was like, well, I don't have a problem with eating though, because I eat relatively healthy. I don't have a real sedentary lifestyle. I go out and do stuff. So at that point, I was talking to my husband, well, what can I, now that I know what's wrong with me, what can I do to figure out how to fix this? Because I'm 20, we're both 28. We would like to have kids someone with this it's going to make it harder to do. So probably about 2018 is when I started looking into like holistic things to help. I got a bunch of books about it, listening to different podcasts, researching a bunch of stuff, and even was doing like low carb. And I even tried like the Mediterranean way of eating and stuff like that. Nothing was really working. I was still having the same problems tracking my menstrual cycles and my menstrual cycles would be over 80 days for a whole cycle. It was just frustrating. And so I started looking into like more aggressive ways to kind of take care of it because I still have PCOS right now. It's just because my body weight has lowered. My periods are more, um, that's where I'm looking for. I said brain fart. (laughs) They come every month now. So and it yes. started the month after I got surgery. They, yeah. Oh, they they are do. regular. Yes. Regular, regular now. Yeah. Yes. That's good. So, but I was looking into stuff like that was more aggressive and I found VSG surgery. So instead of, because bypass, I didn't want to do bypass because you know how they reroute everything. I was like, just take the bottom bit. That seems a little. Kinda, yeah. It's kind of scary. I mean, aggressive. yeah. Era. So. I looked into that and I looked into seeing, because there's some research about how um, women with PCOS who have gotten the surgery have seen a significant difference in it helping it. So when I found that out, that's when I talked to my husband about it. And he was like, yeah, maybe like we can do that, whatever you want to do. And I wish that after I had that initial conversation with him over a year ago, I wish that I would have gotten it like right then and there. So, yeah, 
See, I think we all do that. I think I found out when my kids were really little and I don't even know what I weighed then, probably more than 211. And, but it just seemed so drastic, the bypass, like I was scared and we thought, oh, we'll do, and I think we did keto or low carb and then we did Metafast. Have you ever heard of Metafast? Yeah. Yeah. See, nobody's heard about it. I don't know what the hell. How did I hear about it? But it's just this food program. You eat these meals and I lost a little bit of weight, but it's not sustainable. I mean, I, I gained it back. Yeah. I mean, nothing's, nothing really sticks, but I think my doctor put me on metformin too one time because I'm severely insulin resistant and yeah. my cortisol was like always high, which is mm -hmm. dangerous to, to go every day with your cortisol so high. So, you know, they did a bunch of tests and I had the Boston heart test and all these tests and people are like, you're fine. I know you feel yeah. like you're chubby, but your body's, you know, you, you know, you're okay. And, but I wasn't like, yeah, I was not good and took a while to find somebody who could help me too. And it's a process getting there. So how did your husband take the whole bariatric surgery? The VSG, was he kind of all for it at first or? So he is, he's always been super supportive of me. I've actually been with my husband since we were like 12 and we're both 28 now. So we're like, oh my middle God, school. that is so Our cute. <laughs> yes. What? That is so yeah. sweet. So he's your he's, best friend. He's your best he friend. He's my absolute best friend. We best do everything friend. together. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so he saw me like go through all of this. He was with me when I started gaining a lot of weight and all the, like he's been with me through everything, pretty much the stages of life. And when I told him about it, he was like, I love you the way you are. I've always loved you. It doesn't matter what size you are, what you look like. I don't care. But if this is something that you feel like it is going to help you, then I'm all for it. I really don't care. I just tell me how much it is and we'll figure it out. We'll get it done. He's Aww. super supportive and he still is super supportive. When I, before I got home back from California, he it was so cute. He was like texting my mom, what do I need to buy her from the store? And he got me a bunch of vitamins and stuff like that and different proteins and jellos and stuff like that to make sure that I had everything when I got home and I wouldn't have to leave the, for the store or anything like that. He like stocked up everything. He got me this pillow, like a wedge pillow from Bed Bath & Beyond because I had to sleep on the couch the month because I'm a, I'm a side sleeper and a stomach sleeper and you can't sleep on your stomach. So oh, Super supportive. He's amazing. Oh he really my gosh, is. that is so sweet. So, it, how is food now? Is he okay with your new food? The way we eat now, it's healthier. Yeah. So, we've always eaten pretty healthy. I try because we both have really labor intense jobs. So, I always try and force him to eat more vegetables than he wants because he's not a big vegetable guy. Um, and so I post a lot of stuff on my Instagram too, like the recipes I make, but basically what I'll do is I'll make him dinner and then I'll just kind of make mine similar and like, so he can stop the food that he enjoys and stuff like that. So I'm like, even though I can't have all this, I'm not going to make you stop eating because he tried chickpea pasta with me <laughs> and like plant-based pastas. And he was like, that's really good. And like, you could tell he was not about it. Like he'll eat it because I bought it. Or he was like, yeah, I'd rather have like regular spaghetti. So I'm like, oh, I'll make that stuff for you. You can have it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to make you go completely the same way as me. So, oh yeah. Yeah. Like mine, I, I made a tortilla soup the other day and I just was not in the mood to eat. Some days I just don't want meat but I'd strained some for me and it was so good and I put my vegan cheese in there the fake cheese it's so good it mm -hmm. melts it really does it tastes really good it tastes like cheese but it was so good and so yeah and so he ate his regular big bowl of tortilla mm -hmm. soup and he loved it so that's good that he supports you I pretty much think that the husbands that help you clean out your kitchen and 
get all the junk out and that and don't eat it in front of you. Don't have yeah. it in the house with you. And that eat what you eat, but modify, right? That's what's going to be sustainable for long, you know, what's the word I'm thinking of? I'm having a success, you know, to have long-term success is what I'm thinking. So, yeah. And so I think that's great that, that he kind of does that. So how about kids? Are you planning to have kids? Yes. So can, can you have kids now? Do you think? Uh, so I actually, I have an appointment in January with an OBGYN at ARC. So we're going to kind of figure out because even though I'm having periods every month, I'm, I might not be ovulating. So I'm going to get with her and um, they recommend for you not to have kids 12 to 14 months after surgery. So that wouldn't be until like we wouldn't start trying till like next summer, which is far away, but it's actually really close. Um, <laughs> so I'd have to go with her and just kind of figure out if I am even ovulating. And then if I'm not kind of see what the steps are to get to that point and see if we're going to have to get any fertility help at that point so yeah wow so why would you leave Colorado <laughs> you were in Colorado and you moved to Texas why would you come yeah. to Texas you were in Colorado like I don't uh, I would I, so my okay my middle son is all the way in Europe right because he is also in the military and so when he gets out and he's married they're going to move to Colorado. And my husband, when he retires from the military, we're going to move to Minnesota. But okay. I would really rather live in Colorado. But why would you leave Colorado? It's so pretty there. I can't imagine. Texas is getting so hot. Like, it's not fun anymore. It's not. Like, it's just terribly hot. It's like 110 or I don't even know what it is. This is so hot. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. But yeah, so, so my husband actually... He lived his whole entire life in Colorado, mm -hmm. and my dad was in the military, so I moved around a lot when I was younger, and then we ended up staying in Colorado even after my dad had gotten out of the military and my parents had stayed, because me and my sister were both living there, and I just got kind of bored. I was like, we've lived here for over a decade. Well, I've lived here for over a decade. You've lived here for over 20 years. I'm bored. It's the same thing every day. I didn't feel like the growth for me as an individual and for him as an individual as well. It just, it wasn't happening. Just because of the city we lived in and everything. It was either like a retirement city or you were going there for college. So we were like in that middle area. Of, I don't want to raise my kids here. I don't, you know what I mean? I was like, ah, yeah. no, we need something different. So I actually, before I moved to Colorado, um, I grew up in El Paso and I loved it. And I was like, but I don't want to live in El Paso again. So I was like, I feel like Texas will be a good state. And I was like, where do you want to move? And he was like, I literally have no idea. And I was like, well, Austin, it's in the middle. We can go either which way. And so I love like Austin. I love Austin. Austin's the coolest city to live in. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can just spend the whole day at the domain and or wherever and it's just so pretty good there's so it's just so eclectic is there anything you want to talk about that we haven't that we didn't touch base on I don't know if there's anything probably just that everybody's journey with the surgery is different just like how I had said my roommate from Mexico and everything how she didn't have any problems and all sorts of stuff like that. Because actually, one of my girlfriends, she is getting VSG right now. She just texted me. I think she just got out of surgery. So, and she's been oh asking my me. Gosh. She's been asking me all these questions and leading up to it and everything. And she was just so nervous. But nobody's journey through it is the same. We have a lot of stuff that is similar. You know, how I was like, oh, it was the same weight as you at the same point. But we have so many things that are similar. But don't get discouraged if you. If you see somebody who five months post-op can eat solid foods, perfect. They're getting their protein in perfect. Their water in perfect. Everybody's different. And some days are going to be hard. And some days are going to be really easy. 
some days I get my protein in by lunch and I'm like, okay, wow, who are you? Okay, girlfriend, go or get a half a gallon of water by noon. And I'm like, okay, this is good. So don't feel discouraged when you see that and, you know, see people on the internet showing that like how well they're doing. Cause a lot of, most people don't post their bad days. Right. So just remember that everybody has bad days and that no journey is exactly the same. So. No, I got you. And that was my last question I'd like to ask is, do you have any advice for pre-op or post-op, any tips or tricks or anything for, to help someone else who's also going through this journey? And I think you kind of answered that. Do you have anything else to, you want to put on top of that? But that was really good. That's true. Yeah. So also to just, because I didn't really have like a pre-op diet mine because mine was so fast it was like I I filled out the paperwork I gave them the deposit and I was they were like all right and I was on my way to Mexico within a week it's just like the post-op and everything I noticed that because you're not supposed to drink from a straw I can't drink anything without a straw so I use a straw and I talked to my doctor and he said, that's fine. As long as, you know, you're not getting excess air and everything like that. So just make sure like once, if anybody's like thinking about doing the surgery or after they get the surgery, if something's not working for you, just talk to your doctor because sometimes what works for someone else isn't going to work for you. So, cause I can't drink anything without a straw. It's the weirdest thing now. Cause I'll maybe drink like five sips of water, but with a straw, I can kill like three of these in like two hours. So. Wow. Yeah, I'm not that good. Straw or not. I think I I did a straw. I started the straw too. You just have to, you just can't like suck really hard. You have to just like yeah. a little sucks. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, not like huge like we did before. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Did you ever have any cheating moments? Because I think a lot of us struggle like, the other day I went to go eat something. I'm trying to remember what where I went. And I ordered the full meal. Like I could eat it. Like <laughs> I couldn't even eat it. But my brain, I wanted it. Like I'm so stubborn. And it's like in our brain, we want all the things, right? It's like, oh, I'll try that. And oh, give me that one. And then go ahead and add this and do this and whatever. And we do that. And then we get it. And it was just a waste of money because then we take three bites and then we're like, fuck, I'm done. Like, I can't eat French fries. Like, forget it. I can't eat anything. Two, three French fries and a little piece of meat and it's all I can eat. And it's just a waste of money. So, but have you ever like cheated or had cheating moments? Because I think people need to hear that too because you're doing so awesome. And I think we, it's a journey. And I think having a little hiccups here and there is okay because it's all a brain battle right it's all in our head so um how was that for you did you struggle with that in that area oh yeah and then the way that you're saying that I was laughing so hard because that me every time me and my husband go somewhere and I'm like this sounds good I want this I want that and he's like calm down or sparky you, you can maybe eat half of one of those and I'm like well so it'll end up to where he's like, I'm not going to order anything. You just order what sounds good, basically. And then after you take your two bites, I'll <laughs> enjoy my That's the thought that's all I'm going to do. Yeah. Every time. But I do feel like I kind of do cheat because for me, because I don't, I noticed that before the surgery too, like I did all those diets and everything like that and just trying to redo kind of how to eat. I would binge really bad. Yeah. I was a binger, purger. Yeah. I, not all the time purging, but I think sometimes when I was like so full and like it just, like I made myself sick. I had a serious food addiction problem. <laughs> um, I could eat and eat and nobody ever believed me, which is so frustrating. I would tell yeah. my husband or my sister, like, oh, sissy. <laughs> You're so little. You can't eat that much. You can't. I was like, buddy, you do not know what I do when you are not home because I eat. I eat a lot. Yes, I eat. They never believe me. But yeah, 
But yeah, the binging was hard. Yeah. Yes. So what I try to do now, because of my tool and everything that I have now, I, to avoid the binging is that if I'm craving something that's not the best or it's bread, I don't know what it is about fucking bread. I just, that's like my weakness. I love bread. I don't know what it is. But if it's something like that, if I'm craving it, what I'll do is I will get the smallest little piece and I'll give that to myself. And then I've noticed that once I do that, I'm like, oh yeah, fuck that. I don't want, I don't, I don't want to devour a whole loaf of bread now. Like I got my little piece. I'm good. I'm happy. Now I'm done. So I've noticed that for me, if I give a little bit into it, I won't sit there and like obsess over it mm-hmm. because I know too, like when I was in the liquids and stuff, all I could think about was a solid food. And the binging part is like, you just think about it when you're like, I really want it. So I've noticed that because I know a lot of people after surgery, they don't eat bread at all. They do like low carb and everything. And I told my husband, I was like, I feel like if I go so head on to it and aggressive, I don't feel like I'll be successful. Even though I have this tool, it's just a tool. It's not going to, I'm not going to be able to just eat whatever I want all the time and it still work. You still have to put so much work yeah. into it. And so I was like, I feel like if every once in a while I'm like, you know, it sounds good, bread, and I get like the tiniest little piece, I eat it, I'll be happy. So yeah, you just, I, no, I, I, you're absolutely right. I think I, from a binging perspective, if you don't let yourself get a little bit of it, then you will obsess about it and then you'll really fuck up and. Yep eat it for weeks Uh, and you just can't, you can't do that either. I did try because my biggest thing was Dr. Pepper before, like I love Dr. Pepper. And so I tried Dr. Pepper and man, and I told myself, I'm just going to give it, I'm just going to give, get a little bit of it. And I did because I knew if I, just for me, and that may be some people, everybody's different. Everybody's journey is different. So for some people, they just stay away from it, never open that door. And I get it. But for yes. me, I just want to touch it. And then I'm you're done. good for, I'm good for, so, but I, I did try, doc, I did try Dr. Pepper, which it tasted good for like two seconds, but it tastes like cough syrup. It does not taste good to me anymore, which is, and believe me, I'm stubborn. I'm a stubborn lady. Like I said, let me try it today. Today may be better. So I try it and it tastes like shit. It just doesn't taste good to me anymore. So now I know, hey, I tried it. It tastes like crap. Like I don't like it. I don't get anything out of it. Like my protein shake or a tea or your coffee, your water, your... Gatorade, all of those things, when you drink those, you feel them like it's good for you. It's nourishing to your body. And you can feel that when you drink those. But Dr. Pepper, it's like drinking wax. Like, it's just like, it's nothing. It's just, I don't get anything. It just doesn't taste good. So I'm glad I did that. But now I know I don't like any of those drinks. I did fall in love with the blackberry bubbly. Oh, Car- okay. It's carbonated. I don't know. But I maybe have one every few days or something if I get in the mood for something like a treat treat. But it's not a treat. It's just a carbonated water or <laughs> flavored water. <laughs> yeah. So, but no, I, I yeah. So was it sweets that you loved or did? You know, what did you eat before surgery that was bad and you knew you had to get it out of your life? Probably, I'm telling you, it's bread, like anything. Bread. Bread. Oh, okay. bread. Pastas. Oh, yeah. Yes. Pastas, just starches. <laughs> and just oh, like okay. the most herby foods ever. That was my weakness because I'm not really a sweet person. I have these protein bars that I get and it's supposed to, it gets rid of like, if I'm feeling for something sweet, I'm like, man. I'll eat one of those and I'm good and I get some protein and but just something about like those carby breads, pastas, stuff like that. That's my real, real weakness. And really not really soda or anything like that. 
I'm not, I wasn't a big soda drinker. And like now I've tried, like my husband will get a soda and I'll get a sip of it. And I'm like, it tastes gross now. It does. Your it's taste was really yeah, yeah, with this surgery. So I'm like, if I could go without a soda, I'm good. But it's just the breads and the pastas, that stuff had a hold over me to where it was, I would eat so much of it. And it was yeah. just, ugh. yeah. So what I do now, and I think it's a, an amazing treat. I think it's better than a soda water or anything you can drink. I get a power aid. So if you are early post-op, you can get the power aid zero. If you're closer to maintenance, I would like to lose like 20 more pounds. Then um, you can get just a regular power aid. For some reason, it doesn't work with Gatorade. So Gatorade does not work. It's only power aid. But you put like half your blender bottle with power aid. You fill it with ice. And you just blend it up. And it's like a slush. And well, you can't go to Sonics. Sonics is tricky. If Sonics has the power aid slushes, you cannot get those because they put it's they put like a base and you yes. can't tell them no base because it just comes with it. So it's extra. It's like three times as much sugar. So you can't do it at Sonics. But and I learned that the hard way because okay. I was like, wait a minute, this is too sweet. And I had to research it. But anyway, and it's like a slush. And I sit there and I eat it with a spoon. And one, you're getting a ton of liquid in. So mm -hmm. you're getting all that water and then the Powerade. And it, it's a slush and it tastes so good. I did that with the protein waters. So protein 2O waters or whatever. I've never tried Actually, those, I don't think. Are those good? So they put like a weird like film in your mouth. And I was like, I don't really like them. But okay. this lady, she, um. I was in a bariatric group, a Texas bariatric group on Facebook. And this lady was like, I have all this protein water. Like you, people can have it for free. Please just grab it. And I was like, can I get a case, please? And I got it from her. So I didn't even have to pay for it, which was awesome. But so after like they can stay unrefrigerated until you open them. And once you open them, you have to keep it refrigerated. And so like the first couple that I drank, I was like, I don't know if I like this. Like it like left like a weird like film in my mouth and I was like you know what I'm gonna try blending it up and basically doing it just making turning it into a slushy and it was like 10 out of 10 the best thing ever I don't know holy what it was. shit I'm, I'm gonna, gonna do that it. I'm gonna because I've tried to drink those too and they they taste like shit like I'm sorry they I yeah. spent so much money like mm -hmm. and I just end up giving it away because it I can't it's just gross but I will definitely try that then because I would love some more protein that'd be mm -hmm. good Wow. Okay. The protein 20. Can you get that at like Walmart? Or the, or, um, I'm sure you get it anywhere, right? Yeah. And I think they have them at Sam's too, where you can get the big cases. They have the coconut, tropical coconut is like one of the, like, girl, that, that one. I have a Sam's oh, three blocks over. So I can just, <laughs> like, that's where I'm going today. I stopped in the Sam's. <laughs> is there anything that you've learned that, like, is like a huge tip that you? like that anything that's like aha moment like I found this out and this works or whatever is there anything else I'm trying to think um as you know I mean all of us who watch podcasts I mean listen to podcasts are just trying to hear other people's stories and yeah. absorb all the information because we're just I mean you listen to podcasts you know and I, yeah. I, I love podcasts and that's what we want is to have somebody to just to hear their journey. How did they do it? And how did their, how was their process? So I'm just curious if you have any other. I think if I got any more tricks up my sleeve, I know I'm like, oh my gosh. But I'll, um, I'll definitely get the protein 20 and try as a slush. Because I do love a slush. Like, I don't know. Because I can't have a Cokes. I can't have Cokes. I drink tea a mm -hmm. lot. I, I love tea. I can't have caffeinated anymore. My my Starbucks profi thing is I get decaf. I can't even have caffeinated stuff anymore. Once I got off caffeine, I mm -hmm. can't. It makes me so jittery and I hate that feeling. Like, I just want to climb out of my own skin. I hate that feeling. Of, oh, see. And I have to have caffeine every morning. I get the, the Monster Rehabs because they're uncarbonated. 
Mm-hmm. And I'll drink one of those like right when I get up in the morning. Because I was doing pre-workout right in the morning too. To like, because I don't know if you not, I don't know if it's the same for you, but like, have you been like super tired after surgery? Like right when you wake up in the morning, you're like dragging ass for like two hours or is it just me? Now in the morning, I do get a coffee shake if it's cold out i'll have a hot cup of coffee with the and i'll use my husband's coffee that's caffeinated but i only do it once in the morning like one teaspoon and then i mix that with the fair life with that little blender in your cup and it just Mm -hmm. i mean it's so damn good but yeah only once in the morning or fair life just came out of the coffee came out with the coffee one have you tried it no, I didn't even know they had that. Fair Life came out with a cough, like a protein, you know, it's in the same little bottle, but it's mm-hmm. a coffee and it has a hundred milligrams of caffeine in it. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, but I'm going to this, to this anyway, so I'm not I close. can't drink that. It For some reason, yeah. it makes me too jittery. I don't, I can't, it's too much for me. But yeah, you would sh- get it, girl. That is. I'm all about the caffeine. So yeah. I mean, and- like- Fair Life, I found at the store, they even have a creamer at the store, a Fair Life creamer for your hazelnut creamer for your coffee. And I bought yeah. that one. Yeah. See, I'm adding all this stuff to my shopping list. I'm like, I'm going to go to H-E-B later in Walmart. Yeah. So I'm just adding more stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, man, I'm so in love with the the Fair Life. I think if it works, if you, if anybody finds a protein that works for you you know it's kind of confusing because we hear so much stuff er, try this and try this and there's so many proteins and so many oh this protein has collagen and this protein has this and you know just don't waste your money if you have a protein powder then you could a protein whether it's a powder or the fair life or whatever it is if it works for you and it doesn't hurt your stomach and it's digest well don't go spend your money changing it rent because you're just going to waste money and you know it's just it's not worth it don't do it believe me because i've yep. spent way too much money yeah yeah so but i am super excited i got to talk to you samantha what is your nickname do you go by samantha or sam oh, my nickname sam Sam, oh my God, yeah. that's so cute. I love that, Sam. My my name is Cecilia, but mm-hmm. everybody calls me Cece. See, I love So yeah, I go by Cece. My family calls me Sissy. So oh, everybody calls me Sissy. And that's, you know, that's, my husband won't call me Sissy at all. I don't think he likes Sissy. He likes Cece. But <laughs> It was so nice to sit and chat with you today. You are so beautiful. Oh, I should say for the viewers, for the listeners, sorry. You've got to check out Samantha's pictures on Instagram because Sammy, you look like a total different person. Like I kid you not. Your before picture and your after, you look 10 years younger or what you look younger and vibrant and healthy. And I mean, you just look so amazing. I mean, and I just want you to know that because you, it just, I can't even tell you, y'all have got to go check out Sammy's pictures, go to her Instagram and check it out. You just have such an amazing inspirational story. And I'm so glad I got to meet you and I will hopefully get to know you more since you're, we, oh, and we're going to be having a bunch of events, five major events in major okay. cities, and Austin is one of them. And we're also going to have meetups. I mean, it's going to be Austin. I mean, I'll just tell you, it's going to be Austin, New York, Washington, Florida, and San Diego. Ooh, those are our cities. So we have huge events coming up, lots of good amazing things that we're doing performances inspirational stories giveaways tons of great things that we're i'm getting together coming this spring 
but I can't wait. Hopefully I get to see you again. And yes. I will really definitely awesome. notice you in the crowd because yeah. you notice the other sort of people. Do, and let me ask you, when you're at the store and you see somebody your height or shorter, do you just stop them and say, oh my gosh, it's so nice to meet somebody in my size, you know? And I do yeah. that too. Everybody's so tall. Like, I mean, I, don't know. I mean, I, I wish I was five two at least. That would be awesome. Right? I know. But like, I'm That's barely what- four ten, four eleven. I'm I'm at the four ten, barely. Like I don't think I'm really four eleven. Yeah, I'm like, I think they just Ooh. give me four eleven, but I'm short. I might be a little, I might be a little bit taller than you then, because I'm like almost like I'm like Ooh. barely underneath five foot. So gotcha. oh wow, <laughs> but it's so nice to get to talk to you, Sammy. We wish you all the best, and we look forward to watching your journey as it progresses over the next forever you know i'm I'm excited i'm excited for you all right girl thank you for joining us today bye-bye bye